We'll start our study of the eye by looking at the outside of it and the muscles that move it. So here's um, an eyeball from the front and this is meant to be um, the nasal bone and so um, this would be the right eye. And it's um, looking straight on. And then over here, this is uh, the right eye again, uh, just looking at it from the side. So there are six muscles that move your eye. The first is called the superior rectus muscle. And that muscle, you see superior means uh, above and rectus means straight. And so it's a straight muscle that comes off of the top of the eye. You can probably guess that when it contracts, it's going to pull the eye backward and so you would look up. And then here it is from the side view. And it is controlled by the third cranial nerve that's called the oculomotor. So the oculomotor nerve comes off of the brain, from the brain stem, and it moves this muscle. Okay, then there is a medial rectus. You can hear in the names again where it will be located. So medial means it's on the medial side of the eye, and rectus means straight. It is also controlled by the third cranial nerve, the oculomotor. Oculo means eye, motor means movement. Oops, I just colored the lateral rectus, didn't I? Uh, the medial rectus, since this is the right eye, would be hidden right here. Sorry about that. Okay, so that's the medial rectus. Then the inferior rectus is also controlled by the oculomotor cranial nerve. And you can hear once more in its name what it's doing. It's going to turn the eye down when it contracts. So, so far we have an eye muscle that helps us look up, an eye muscle that when it contracts, it's going to help you look medially towards your nose. You can't contract both of those on your right eye and your left eye, or you can at the same time, and that's when you would um, cross your eyes. And here you can see the inferior rectus, that when it contracts, it's going to pull your eyeball down. Then there is one more muscle controlled by the oculomotor nerve and that is called the inferior oblique. Can you hear in the name inferior means it's located on the underside of the eye and oblique means that the muscle is at an angle uh, orange for this one.
Now this will help to roll the eye so that you can look at different angles. So the combination of moving one, this oblique muscle in combination with other muscles is, gives us the ability to look more than just up, down, and side to side. We can also roll our eyeball. But um, another way that we can roll our eyeball is up above it, and that's the superior oblique. And now we get into a different cranial nerve, the fourth cranial nerve, We always use Roman numerals for these 12 pairs of nerves that come off the head. I heard a mathematician make a joke the other day that they love to do algebra problems with Roman numerals. You should try it sometime. Okay, so then the superior oblique in purple. And you notice that it is going at a different angle than the inferior oblique, so we can roll our eyeball in both directions. And you might also notice that this muscle is attached by a little notch. It's a little ligament that comes off of the nasal bone, and it's called the trochlear notch. And sure enough, the cranial nerve number four is called the trochlea. That is the only function of that cranial nerve is to move this one muscle. And then there's another muscle that moves your eye so that you can look to the side, and that is the lateral rectus. That's controlled by cranial nerve number six. And we use yellow for that. The lateral rectus, when it contracts, helps you look to the side. And this is one where uh, there's an inhibition of the muscles from both activating at the same time. So whereas you can have both medial rectuses contracted and look cross-eyed at your nose, you can't contract both of your lateral rectuses and look to the outside. So the sixth cranial nerve is called the abducens, and um, you can remember what this one does because it's got the word abduct in it, and abduct means to take something away from the body, and so you're looking away, you're looking out to the side. So the lateral rectus is controlled by the abductor eye muscle, the abducens. And then the superior oblique is controlled by the trochlear muscle, or sorry, the trochlear cranial nerve. And um, a way to remember that is that the superior oblique goes through the trochlear notch, and so therefore it must be the one that's controlled by the trochlear nerve. Okay, now we'll go ahead and um, look down at the eyeball here from the front. And I'm going to show you uh, how tears are formed. So there is a tear gland that sits on top of your eyeball. It actually, as you can see up here, it sits next to um, the different eye muscles. And it is stimulated by the seventh cranial nerve, which is called the facial. Now this cranial nerve is also responsible for powering up the skeletal muscles that move your face. But now look at this, what kind of a job is this? Is it sensory or motor? Well, it's sensory, or sorry, it's motor, yikes. And is it voluntary or involuntary? Well, unless you might consider yourself very good at making yourself cry, we typically consider this autonomic or involuntary. So this is motor output, and it is autonomic output, and it is parasympathetic. 
So when you are under stress, what do you think happens to tear production? If parasympathetic makes the tears and sympathetic is going to inhibit the tears and you're stressed out, what happens? Well, you have an inhibition of those tears. And then you can look at, okay, so the tears get formed and they drain across the eye to keep it moist. And then they drain over here. This uh, funny pink thing in the corner of your eye is called the lacrimal caruncula. Caruncle, I mean. And there are two tear ducts. that drain from the corner of the eye down the tear sac. So you've got two tear ducts and then the lacrimal sac drains the excess tears To where do you think? What happens when you get choked up during a movie? Well, you start sniffling, right? So it drains excess tears to the sinuses. And then the fluid starts to run out your nose. Now, interestingly, um, because the sinuses, like your nasal passages, um, put that on here, nasal passages. Because the nasal passages are connected to the eye, then um, this is a common entry point for infection. Let's say the flu is going around. It's unlikely that if you get flu virus on your hands and stick them in your mouth that you will get the flu as compared to the risk if you are to get the flu virus on your fingers and then rub your eye. Because if you rub your eye, it's going to go directly to your nasal passages. The flu is a respiratory infection. Whereas the flu virus is not as adapted for living in um, the mucosal membranes of your mouth. And there's enzymes in the saliva that could destroy it. Or it could get swallowed to your stomach where it would be destroyed there. If a tear duct gets blocked then um, that can cause really watery or runny eyes. My um, nephew, um, his eyes were always just kind of streaming his whole first year of life. So when the little guy was about 18 months old, they did have to do a surgery to open up those tear ducts a little bit better for him. Okay, now the cornea, or the sclera of the eye, sorry, So the surface is covered with a mucous membrane called the conjunctiva. So it makes mucus, and that's the stuff that if you talk about having sleep in your eyes, that has um, built up and then dried during the night with a mucous membrane called the conjunctiva, and also this lines the underside of your, your eyelid. So if that gets inflamed, maybe from being in a boat on a windy day, or from maybe being in bright sunlight even for a while, then we would call that a conjunctivitis. Pink eye is a type of conjunctivitis caused by bacteria. Um, I believe that they don't usually talk about pink eye when it's a, a viral infection, that it's usually a bacteria. Okay, and then one other uh, thing I'd like to put on this page before we end actually refers to the alignment of these muscles. Maybe you've heard of something called strabismus. Uh, kind of a rude thing that you might hear parents say is uh, they might call it lazy eye. What it really means is that there's a misalignment 
of the eye muscles. And really, if you think about it, this is kind of amazing how well they do work together. They're com controlled by um, the, the cranial nerves, but different ones, right? Because you have, two, uh, you have two oculomotor nerves, one that goes to your right eye and one that goes to your left eye. But they work together so that if you want to look at something, both of your eyes move together to look at it. So if one of the eye muscles is not keeping up with the others, there can become a misalignment of the eye muscles. And this can become pretty dangerous for the future of the child's vision if it isn't corrected because then something called um, amblyopia can occur. And that's when one eye stops sending its vision info to the brain. So this can lead to, and if this continues, then that part of the brain will eventually atrophy. And then they'll be blind in one eye. And that's why the typical treatment for strabismus is where they'll put a patch on the eye that is moving well, and they'll force the eye that has not been aligned properly to do all of the vision for all of the work and to hopefully strengthen that eye so it continues sending information to the brain so that part of the brain will develop.